Hey everybody, Nick Licamelli here. Today we're back in the basement gym and uh, we're going to talk about um, what we could do at home when we're recovering from an injury. So uh, if you follow anything that I've done, um, you know that, uh, especially for weightlifters, um, is uh, when there's pain, uh, very, very, very rarely is the answer to stop lifting, right? So if you have pain during a squat, for example, um, very rarely do I like saying don't squat or stop squatting. Um, usually it's a matter of modifying training variables, whether it be load or volume or range of motion, intensity, things like that. Um, but there tends to always be a way to modify your training to keep doing the movement in a pain-free way to um, just kind of gradually expose your body uh, to that movement without pain um, to sort of desensitize the system over time. Um, it, uh, it keeps us active, it keeps us doing what we love, um, and, uh, and it seems to be the, the, um, the, the best approach to these types of things. So um, other than the modifications in the gym, what can we do at home, right? So say we train four to five times a week uh, for an hour, hour and a half. In the grand scheme of things, that's not much time that we're exposing our body to a movement, right? Um, so, so there, there, there are some important things you can do at home when you're not at the gym to further the recovery process and further the created exposure um, to to the desired movement. Uh, so, for example, in the example of the squat, say there was a knee pain uh, at the bottom of a squat, right? So maybe we found out the uh, you know the right thing to modify the right thing that's triggering the pain in the gym, like we were saying, whether it be volume, intensity, load, range of motion, right? We found that. We made a modification in the gym. What do we do at home? A simple thing we could do is just a body weight squat within the pain-free range of motion. So, for example, we can um, hold on to a counter or something sturdy and just come down into our squat, right? to the edge of discomfort where maybe we're getting our pain and come back up, right? So we're just doing the basic squatting pattern um, while we're at home. We're not loading our tissue really, we're not like breaking down muscle, um, but we're just still training that squat pattern uh, without pain and that's what we want. It's, it's, it's consistency, it's, it's, um, it's, it's jab, 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 jab uh, over time slowly chipping away at that to desensitize the system, right? So we don't have to hold on, right? If you can just do your normal squat in that pain-free range, that's perfect. If that's painful, then you can brace yourself on something sturdy. If the pain is not at the bottom of the squat, maybe the pain is right at the top of the squat, what we could do is brace yourself to get past that painful point, right? And now we can work in the pain-free range and then help pull yourself up through that part that's painful. We can even bring a chair or some kind of box squat into it, right? So we can squat down. Maybe the pain comes at the transition from the eccentric to the concentric. So this kind of this chair kind of disrupts that pattern and then can kind of allow us to squat and, and not have pain, right? So simple ways to um, to keep training, keep training the squat uh, pain-free, to keep exposing ourselves to that movement um, and retraining the system to 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 function like that without pain. Uh, so again, I would say the most important thing is to um, dive into your program, right? Find ways to modify your training uh, that work for you because everyone's different, right? Everyone's going to have a different pain trigger. Um, a variable in their training. Uh, so we have to find that. Um, Got to get in touch with a qualified healthcare practitioner that's going to dive into your program, see what you're doing, see how you're doing it, and, and really work with you there. Um, so I would say that's the most important, but things you're doing at home when you're not at the gym are also very important because that make, that takes up a lot of, of time. Um, you know, majority of our time is not spent at the gym. So uh, what we do outside the gym is very, very important. Um, so do those things, you know, multiple times a day just to continually, again, chip away at that movement to uh, kind of desensitize that system. All right. Hope this helps. Again, not medical advice. Uh, number one thing is go see a healthcare practitioner who will 
who will dive into your program and treat you as an individual. And um, yeah, so we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you want, and we'll see you next time.